They brought a lady backstage who was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. And the typical protocol for that is, you know, you remove that part of the body. So they, they surgically removed her rectum in part of her colon. And when you lose that part of your body, you lose bowel control. You lose your dignity. You can't be more than 10 feet from a restroom. You're spending the majority of time there. She had a bag. She couldn't sleep. She got depressed. She got suicidal. And the doctors told her, you know, at your age, you're going to have to learn to live with this. Now, I know this is crazy for your audience, and it's crazy for me too, because what I witnessed on the stage that day changed me forever. And so her whole goal was to be able to grow part of her rectum and colon back. Now, if you physically take tissue away and it's no longer there, uh, it's not in the current belief paradigm that you can regenerate tissue. And so she started her work, her inner work, and after a period of time, she was able to do a whole meditation <laughs> without sitting on the toilet or getting up and breaking and going to the toilet. And then she started noticing that those periods got a little bit longer and that's all she needed, right? Because as soon as you notice that change, some, something changes. You're noticing what you're doing is creating that. So you do more of it and you do it with greater intention. So she came to a week-long retreat a few years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And of course, you know, this is a big deal for her because she hasn't left her house. And she went through every single lecture in every single meditation during that week-long without having to use the restroom. Again, another big change. She goes to the doctor after that event and she has five centimeters of her rectum and colon growing back. And then she came to the event in, in December in Cancun and uh, I, saw the, I saw the scan. Uh, she literally regrew 10 centimeters of that tissue that was physically removed. She lost nine and she grew back 10. I saw the scan, it was juvenile, opalescent, vascular, young, regenerated tissue. It wasn't scar tissue, it was brand new tissue. And she changed her life. And what that says is that the human body has the innate capacity to regenerate itself at any age if it's given the right information. Now, that's not part of how we're programmed. We're programmed into something completely different. And up until my personal observation of that, I would have, it would have been a stretch for me. Like, oh, uh, yeah, maybe. But like the salamander, like the octopus, like the starfish, somehow she regenerated tissue. And, and again, we have to change our belief in what's possible. So we have people that have grown back thyroids. We have had people with stage four cancer that metastasized you know, to their bones and to all their organs have no evidence of cancer. It has become quite the exploration for me in, in stretching my own personal belief. That is extraordinary and totally consistent with what I have come to imagine is possible. I, I wonder, did she focus intentionality on that or was it just a secondary effect of what? No, she was, she was intentional. She told the, the surgeon, she said, I want to grow my tissue back. And the surgeon, of course, said, you know, that's not possible or I don't believe it is. But her husband said, I believe you can do it. And she never missed a day. And so when she got in the right state of mind and body, kind of this altered state that we teach, you know, the door between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is opened up to information. You got to be able to change your brainwaves to do that. So whatever she has the intention that she's imagining, and she can make that thought more real than anything else, that intention acts as information that begins to signal the autonomic nervous system, which controls and coordinates all other systems, to get busy to begin to biologically change the body to reflect the information it's receiving. And you can't do that in fear. You can't do that in frustration. You can't do that in anger. That information doesn't make it in. They, she has to change her emotional state as well. So she had all the reasons in the world uh, in the beginning of her journey to feel discouraged, to feel victimized, to feel fearful. And she changed her emotional state. <laughs> and by beginning to feel that emotion, the body could receive that information. So you have to, in this case, combine a clear intention, that's the information, regulate your brain states, open the door, and then move the body into an elevated emotion that tends to be more heart-centered. And when we're feeling the emotion of the future before it happens, 
The body is the unconscious mind. It's so objective, it doesn't know the difference between the real life experience that's creating that emotion and the emotion that person's creating by thought alone. The body's believing it's living in a new environment. And if the environment signals the gene, and it does, and the end product of an experience in the environment is an emotion, she's literally signaling genes ahead of the environment. <laughs> and genes make proteins. And proteins are responsible for the structure and function of the body. And you could literally begin, if you did it consistently, to begin to regenerate new tissue. And I'm sure she had uh, a few dark nights, but she never stopped believing in that she could do it. And the belief in the idea that she could was what drove her every day to, to apply and do something with it. So, so there's a, a way that we alter a person's state that allows them to, to begin to program their autonomic nervous system.